check, check, check. All right. Excellent. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, new season. Ready to rock, ready to roll. Alan Lee might come today. Uh, we're having time issues. Uh, but if it stalls any longer, Alan Lee should be here. If not, uh, it'll just be me and the great John Rudnitsky. Uh, John is a stand-up comedian. You've seen him on SNL. Uh, he's also on this TV show called The Big Leap, where he plays Mike Tiberius. Uh, he was in movies Home Again with Reese Witherspoon, and he's also been on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Now, did I say that right? Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm. Wow. He's also in uh, All My Life, and Big Hero. Six, the TV show. So, yeah, I met John over Instagram, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. First, I thought it was a fake, uh, you know, Instagram, because a lot of celebrities have a lot of fake Instagrams, I guess. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll probably talk about this with John. But I've messaged quite a few celebrities on Instagram, and it turns out it wasn't the celebrity. It was like some uh, spam person or whatever. It's very awkward. Anyways, I hope you guys had a great holiday. Uh, we're slowly rolling, diving back in, and all that jazz. I got this new heater, and uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it also does air conditioning. It was the best gift I got. And uh, yeah. So that's cool. I'm really bad at doing opening remarks by myself, I think. Uh, I don't have any shows to plug. Um, you know, this is 2022. This is. Uh, technically year two of covid i don't know it's either year two or year three it depends on the calendar even though it's covid was 2020 and it's 2022 so it'd be two years but uh man it's a long two years i i feel i because before covid the dates were all over the place and now it's like you're fighting for a gig oh that's just me anyways we're about to talk to john rudnitsky coming up you're listening to razor riffs with keith razor and alan lee Right here on LA Talk Radio. There he is. How you doing? Hey man, how are you? I'm good, Keith. Thanks. Thanks for uh, being so flexible with all this. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. It's of uh, course. It's good to finally see you on the Zoom. It's good to see you on the Zoom. Oh, man. This is so, how we do it. Doing good. I like your hat. For the folks at home, uh, John's wearing a cool hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wearing a cool hat. It's from the Madonna Inn. Uh, my uh, girlfriend and I went on a drive up the coast um, last week, and we, we stopped at this weird place called the Madonna Inn, which is where Dennis Rodman uh, – I, I guess wrote out some of the pandemic. Yeah, I think that kind of gives you a sense of it. <laughs> Do you think like uh, like that's the new career goal is to get a hotel named after somebody? You know what I mean? Like Madonna. Yeah, I, <laughs> I actually don't think it's named after her, but it might as well be. Uh, 
I, uh, I think that probably is a great call. Yeah. The Rudnitsky N, the Reza N, I don't know. <laughs> I would take it. I'd be happy with that. Just like, uh, you know, a little spot. It yeah. could be in the shittiest part of town. <laughs> I'd be happy if it was like a hostel. I'll just Airbnb my place out and call it that. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be the quickest way to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah. Now, John, it's been a, a rough couple of years with the pandemic, and I don't know about you, but my 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 comedy, I feel, has gotten worse during this whole thing. Yeah, I definitely was um, rough when I first got back into it, um, but I just done a few weeks in a row on the road, and I, I feel like I'm back in the flow of it a bit. Yeah. Uh, but it was tricky getting back into it. it you definitely do get rusty. Yeah. They, they say yeah. like, you know how they say like things is like they come to you when you're riding a bike, you'll never forget with stand up. Cause I've been doing stand up since I was 15 and I know you started pretty young too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things where like, you know, I, I used to go up when I was younger, like 10 times a week. And then, you know, as I got more work, you know, it came the, to six shows a week. But when it's two years, it's just like, holy Lord, you kind of forget it in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, totally. It, it is true. It's uh, it's tough to, to just get back up and 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 as and feel like you're in the groove. You're like and not be totally in your head. Um yeah, and I didn't do any of the virtual shows because I just felt that uh, that would be beneficial to my confidence or my act. And <laughs> I understand. I'm, you know, I'm not like, I mean, I write, I'm a joke writer, obviously, but I'm a physical guy, first and foremost. I mean, my punchlines are in my body a lot of the time. So it just wouldn't really uh, benefit me to do it on uh, in my living room to, <laughs> you know, mild, if any, laughter. No. I, I'm sorry, you probably get asked this a lot, but yeah, uh, when you were on SNL, yeah, SNL is more of a sketch thing. Did you still do stand up while you're we on that, or like was it hard where like you were just focusing on the sketches? No, I would do stand up on my nights off, um, sometimes you know, if I wasn't too exhausted from work, I would do, um, I would just stand up at clubs around New York. And that was always great because a lot of times at that job for me in the year I was on it, I would feel very unfunny. Um, I would bomb a lot at the table reads. So to go and do a show and get people to laugh would be um, a nice necessary confidence booster. Just like, Oh, I'm not terrible. I'm not like the least funny person alive, you know? So <laughs> stand up just, it kind of keeps you fresh. It gives you some control in an industry where that's not usually an option, you know? I mean, it, it is more and more so now that people have the capacity to use their phones to um, create whatever they want, which, um, I mean, has also, like, ruined us, but also uh, helped us in so many ways and given us the power in a lot of ways. So, uh, but for me, stand up is the way I feel like I'm writing, directing, and performing in my own show. Yeah. Um, and with acting, you're waiting for a call from your agent. And so it's just, um, yes, yeah, stand up's always been the, the thing that's kept me a bit sane. No. So I've, uh, yeah, creatively in control. Now, did you do stand up to, to get into acting? Because I, I look at you more as a comedian. You know what I mean? Because I've actually seen you, you know, a couple of times back when I was a young, young lad. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Is that so? That's that's wild. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I it was always both, you know, like I always just loved performing and um, like growing up. My mom would drive me from Jersey into the city to do open mics, uh, the comic strip and. And I would take UCB classes in the city in high school, but I was also in the plays in high school and uh, on the improv team. So I was like, was just always interested in every aspect of it. Yeah. Um, 
So for me, it's, yeah, that I love both equally. I find acting to be a more an, e- I, an easier thing, a harder job to get maybe at this point. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, stand-ups, stand-ups something you really have to work at, obviously, to, to get the work. But um, I was just going to say acting, when you get the job, I find is a little easier. You know, they give you the lines to say you already booked the job because they like the way you did it then. Um, you get paid much better than you do unless yeah. you're, you know, Kevin Hart or whatever, or, you know, a known comedian. <laughs> um, so for me, stand up's not not as glamorous. You know, right. it's like the hotels are shitty. A lot of times the venues are not great. Um, but I loved all that too. I find something so romantic about the road and doing stand up in that way. Um, so they just kind of differ as, as far as that's concerned. I mean, I'm sure as you work your way up, of course, you know, the stand up can be glamorous too. You yeah. fly private to your casino gig and go out there for thousands of people who love everything you're going to say, but that's not where I'm at right now. So yeah. a lot of times I'll, but, but the movies I do can be really nice. So, like I remember, I I shot this movie with Reese Witherspoon, but the, the in like Brentwood. But the weekend before I shot that movie, I was at a bowling alley in Muskegon, Michigan, getting chased off stage, you know, and I got paid in cash out of like a garbage bag. So um, that, to me, that's what's kind of funny about the difference for me at this point, in my career. How I actually the saw the contrast home between again. the two. You saw that. I saw home again because like uh, I wanted to, I actually, I'm one of those weird guys who I actually really do enjoy romantic comedies. Like I think that, I think like in a movie form, that's the best comedy. You know what I mean? Because it has heart heart to it. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, I love that. I I appreciate you admitting that on the record. Yeah. Uh, Stand up, uh, probably not. But, you know, in movies, like, I, I felt like The Hangover was okay, you know, but I, I find, like, I don't know, Runaway Bride to be great. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and I think you it's like because they don't going. expect it to be good, you know? Right. right. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, I'm a sucker for, for romantic comedies as well. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm glad you watched it, though. I appreciate you watching it. I thought for sure your character was going to get with Reese Witherspoon. Though. Yeah, a lot of people said that. Uh, well, maybe there'll be, be a sequel and we can make it happen. <laughs> but you had to you have to beat off Michael Sheen. What was that like working with him? I love beating off Michael Sheen. I do that in <laughs> uh, my spare time anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Michael Sheen. Michael that guy's an cool. actor. You want to talk about acting. That guy is talented. Yeah, he's great. Michael Sheen's an excellent actor. Um, it was super cool working with him. I mean, Reese, everybody, you know, uh, in that a part of that was was really special to work with. I was very lucky to to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, you just yeah, you learn a lot. You learn a lot from being around people like that. Like Reese, you know, she's she's been doing this a long time, and you can tell why. Um, not only she's good at what she does, but why people respect her because she's she's really very kind and sets a tone. And there's a way to be a boss and not be mean, you know. Yeah. Um, I find that people who kind of suck don't last anymore, you know. <laughs> that, 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 that that era is kind of ending. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely learned a lot from from watching her. Now, you know, when you when you uh, when you work with people. Even when you're on SNL, like, uh, do you like take tips from what you've learned and make that into a better comedian or a better actor? Um, yeah. Oh, totally, totally. You know, I had just gotten um, let go from SNL when I did that movie, and Reese would say a lot of encouraging things. You know, She'd have me like shrug it off and. You know, she's like, oh, that little show, you do movies now, you know? So it's just kind of like that mentality. Um, uh, You know, she's like, be like LeBron, you know, just act like LeBron and then you'll be LeBron, you know, kind of thing. And uh, and she is. Uh, When we were done with that, I I sent her an autograph 
of LeBron, but I signed it. <laughs> I, pretend I was LeBron and something. I forget what I said, but you know, you're the goat or whatever, but um, it's true. I think it's just like a mentality being able to handle those downs, you know, the, because it is so inconsistent and, you know, getting fired from SNL is like a very public thing. And um, it can be kind of embarrassing and demoralizing and terrifying. You're like, am I ever going to work again? You know? And so it is really important to watch how other people ha have handled that because people that you think have been famous or successful forever, probably if you went on their IMDB, probably had a few years where you hadn't heard much from them. Um, so that's so true too. Cause a lot of people don't realize that like you could do one project in five years and then come back. You know what I mean? They're like, what do you do in five years? Yeah. And I've definitely had some, you know, I've definitely had moments in my career. Every time I kind of get a big job, I think, Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is it. And there are elements of that, you know, but also nothing is, I mean, I haven't done a hunger games or a Marvel movie. So I'm sure that that, that job is obviously out there, but it's my coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. But in my experience, you know, there have been things that have been very exciting, but it's always um, when it's over, it's always like, OK, this is kind of unsettling again. Where do we go? And that's why stand up is such an amazing thing, because in the like I just finished shooting a TV show and I don't know if this show is coming back. I don't have another acting gig. I've got a few small little acting parts lined up, but nothing like consistent like that. So stand up is this thing that will keep me, keep me going, keep me paying the rent, keep me focused on something and writing. And, you know, yeah. I can come back from, I come back from a show at the end of the night and I feel like I did something, you know, it's a good I, feeling. I think that's awesome. And I, I, I have a feeling the Marvel movie you're going to be in, just hear me out on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. X-Men, but you're going to be Gambit. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think I'm Gambit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just see that, you know what I mean? I think the spinoff is coming. <laughs> I think so. I think you're right. Let's put it out there. Yeah, let's do it. I'll, we'll we'll yeah. both write the script. And, it, and here's the thing, it, it won't be a, a, a superhero movie, it'll be a a comedy superhero movie. Yeah. Or just a talk show. Yeah. You know? Gambit. <laughs> Late night with Gambit. <laughs> and no, I just but, interview uh, other X-Men. <laughs> but no, I totally, I totally agree. Like, because um, I, I used to tour with Norm MacDonald and, um, you know, I was with him for wow. seven years and, uh, you know, every single show, I, I learned how to get better at comedy. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Because I he bet. was the best comedian ever. Yeah. Acting-wise, he wasn't a good actor. So I learned nothing acting-wise from him. <laughs> well, he just acted like he did stand-up. He just, he didn't change. He didn't give it anything, which was kind of great. Yeah. I mean, I loved him. And I loved him in Billy Madison and Dirty Work. <laughs> you know? We wrote a sequel and then... He died. You wrote a dirty word, a sequel. Yeah, me, um, uh, Norm, and Fred Wolf, and we we gave it to Saget, and Saget did his tweaks on it, and then Norm died, and then Saget was like, "Hey, we should still do it to honor Norm," and then Saget just died. Oh, so God. I'm like thinking, who's gonna like? I don't know Artie Lang, but like I feel like if we do it, uh. You know, we could cast you to play Norm. And, yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. I'm so sorry that you lost all these guys. Man. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's been a devastating year for comedy. Yeah. 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 I, also, I also opened up for Jay Moore. And uh, Jay told me uh, when when Saget died, he's like, hey, Keith, uh, I don't think I want you to open up for me anymore because everyone dies. When you open up. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, don't bring this script to me because it sounds like everybody who touches it, you know, I wouldn't bring it to Artie Lang. I feel like that might be a mistake. Yeah, I know. So I'm like, OK, but that's dead in the water. But uh, but no, like yeah. that's. Oh, that, man. So wait, I'm, I'm, tell me, so, tell me what it was like kind of watching Norm um work and do stand up would he just try out new stuff all the time was he yeah norm 
I've, I mean, I've seen him do the same set before, but not on the same night or the same city, you know? Yeah. So Norm was one of those guys who had so much material. I, I once saw him, uh, we did a, we did a seven o'clock show and the show, usually there's a seven and a nine o'clock show, right? So we did the seven o'clock show. The seven o'clock show doesn't get out until 1030 because Norm just did like two and a half hours. And then he's in the green room. He's like, I feel bad for the people at the nine o'clock show. And I was like, why? He's like, because they're not getting home till 2 a.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, so, and that's what he did. He did another three hours. Yeah. So, I, you know, he, wow. that, that was the and thing. So he you, just would, you would be doing. on the road with him. Would you hear stuff you hadn't heard all the time? Yeah. So it was just, wow. dude, it, it was a dream come true, man. Because Norm was, I'm not just saying this because I toured with him, but when I wanted to do comedy, he was my favorite comedian. And I have asked, I have Asperger's too. So like I was very nonverbal when I first met him and he kind of got me into that whole stand up scene and how to do comedy and stuff. So, you know, he was my, he was one of my best friends. How did you, how did you meet him? He saw you Uh, doing a show. No, I met him, you know, the casual stalking way. I, uh, I I saw him at a show and I, I asked him for an autograph and I, I didn't really talk much. And, you know, he just, I don't know, I guess he just liked me. And then the following year I kept going and then eventually he just said, Hey, you want to do five minutes? And that five minutes turned into 30 minutes and you know what I mean? Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty unbelievable. That he got to work with any advice that he would give you that really stuck with you. Yeah. He said, uh, always try your best because you're never going to be funnier than me. <laughs> so I think, I think that that's actually true advice because um, I think if you with stand up, you, you see a lot of comics who think they're edgy and they bomb, you know what I mean? Or right. they, they'll take Mitch Hedberg jokes and make it their own because no one knows who Mitch Hedberg is anymore. You know what I mean? So I think they'll try and be edgy like that. But the problem is, is bombing is very healthy to comedy, I feel. So I feel, you know, I feel you're not a real comedian unless you you bomb. Oh, totally. You you can't avoid it, really. It's going to happen. Mark Maron was talking about that today. Like he did the comedy store the other night, crushed in the big room and then bombed in the small room with the same jokes. And it just made me feel uh, understood, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it, it just happens. And he goes, he goes, you know, some people say there are no bad crowds. He's like, fuck that. Some crowds are just bad. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Just some crowds are weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do always feel like leaving those shows like, but I want to figure out how to make it work. I want to figure out how to, how to do, you know, how I could have done better on those nights that are off. Um, but that always happens. That always happens. No. That's really inspiring and cool to be on the road with somebody like that who pushes you to get better. I was, um, I opened for Andrew Santino for a while and that was really helpful to me. He took me under his wing and then I got SNL really young. So then I started headlining before I had an hour really. Yeah. So then that, that forced me to, get better quick yeah um yeah so then you know like 20 minutes wouldn't work then i got better i got good at crowd work yeah you know, to fill time and i think though when you're on a show though it kind of helps you because it say you don't have the material you could like you could tell like stories of like Miley Cyrus licking you or Donald Trump, you know, not sure, liking yeah. your jokes or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could, you could, yeah. you, could like, you could pull tricks like that. Yes. And I have a, I like a slideshow that I'll present with some, some images and things like that, which is helpful to, uh, <laughs> I have a, a buddy of mine from high school that was an extra on SNL when I was there. Oh, nice. Uh, because of me. And um, 
he was like in the intro of the show, you know, when I'm like walking down the street with my buddies and he finagled his way into becoming an extra and he ended up in more sketches than me. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I show, I show a slideshow with like my buddy Bogo in the background of all these sketches. And then I show me in like a Santa suit where you can't see my face and it's uh, it's fun. It's fun, but yeah, it definitely helps. And I would tell stories about like McConaughey hosting and Trump hosting and things like that for sure. Um, I've taken those things out a bit just because I want to, for the most part, move past SNL. And I'll talk about it that much if I can, just because yeah. I've got other things going on. I feel pretty distant from it. So, well, it, it doesn't, I don't feel that defines you either, you know, because like I said, thank I knew, God, I'm so happy about that. Yeah, because I, I, I saw you at the ground links, you know what I mean? So like that's. Oh, damn. Because I went to the ground links and. I didn't really like the ground links, but I still went, you know what I mean? Gosh, we got you. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. You must've been like a writing lab show or just like, yeah. A, yeah. Writing, yeah. writing sketch is very diff. I think that's why I didn't like the ground links. It's very difficult for me. So. Yeah. It's difficult for me too. It's difficult for me too. And I've been asked to do it uh, just, just to like, come on for like um, improv and I have the, um, crazy uncle joe show i think it is or right, with yeah. Dak, one or the other and um i did it a few years back with them as like a guest and i was by far the worst one on stage <laughs> i was talking about being rusty like you know that's something we really have to have the <laughs> tools sharpened and whatnot but i was not not good in that department you know yeah i get um, i get that and uh so I stopped doing sketch and I started doing stand up and I I just fell more in love with stand up because I felt stand up you're more free where sketch you have to rely on other people too you know Totally yeah I think I initially was like oh it's a more supportive community and this that but yeah there's something liberating about stand up once you really get in the flow of it where you don't have to meet up with anyone to practice you can just kind of like yeah, it's kind of cool. You don't need anything. Yeah. Did you, you don't do need any... to bring any wigs or, you know, <laughs> a guitar. You, know, you just fucking show up and you, you say some stuff and you go home. Did you have any idea when you were a kid that they would be putting you up at the Madonna Inn, though? Um, no. <laughs> I had no idea. I know. The dreams really do come true. The Madonna Inn's way nicer than any place they're putting me up on the road, by the way. <laughs> they always put me up at like the motel six and like the chains are always and, and, norm, and norm would be at the what the four seasons across the street or something no when i was on the road with norm I, uh, he would have a suite at like the fancy rooms and the the suite would have two rooms in it so i would get the smaller room that's so nice yeah so that's so nice Sam. because uh really take you under his wing. that means so much when you're coming up to have somebody do that. Yeah. And Santino did that for me. It like meant a lot. And and I bombed a lot, you know. And I didn't feel comfortable like going outside my material. My material wasn't that good. So you're really kind of stuck. You really have to like tough it out. And I mean I guess there's people who are good immediately. Um, but that wasn't the case for me. Like I knew yeah. I was funny, but I wasn't funny on stage right away, you know. Well, see, there's a there's a difference too about being funny and then being funny on stage. Where if you're if you're just naturally funny, I think anyone could be a comedian. But I think that there's some type of art to to getting it up there because a lot of people are scared of public speaking. Totally, and and you know, it's like how how I'm funny in the in conversation with my friends, making that finding a way to make that translate on stage to a bunch of drunk strangers in Milwaukee or whatever that's a whole other thing you realize that I don't know I realized that it's not that much of a jump in a way right. um, but I had to like start off doing what I thought comedians do and stand there and 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 like try to act like whatever I thought it, you know this is how I put my hand on the mic stand and this is how I walk or whatever and I you know I'm probably imitating Andrew because I was on the road with him then uh just over time, I started to realize, oh, it's way closer to what I'm actually like. Right. Uh, every day. And that might be different for other people. Some people have more of a persona on stage. But 
Um, yeah. Who who was the person though who like made up this rule in stand up comedy that you have to take the mic out of the stand? Because you just mentioned that, and I I don't really think you need to. You know. Um, I don't know if you need to take the mic out of the stand, but I think if you do take the mic out of the stand, you got to move the stand behind you. Right. Yeah. That I don't know, but that's a good rule. Yeah. I've I stand ne- by that rule. Really? Otherwise gotta, yeah, because yeah, otherwise the stand's right there. It's like a, <laughs> you got to walk around. You got to bring the wire around. It's just like, feels to me like taking the mic out and putting the stand behind you is good. Or if you're going to keep the mic in the stand, then that's fine. That's that's totally fine. But yeah. I don't think you take the mic out and leave the stand right where it is. Then it's an obstructed view. Then it's an obstacle in your way. That's true. I, I never take the mic out of the stand. I always leave it because I feel the stand is like my, my, uh, because I'm very insecure about my humor, even though I know I'm funny. I think the stand is like my, the audience can't get past the stand. So I don't take yeah, it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like bringing the dog on the plane with you. It's like your comfort animal. It's like your your shield. It's good that you have that. Then that's fine. Uh, that's totally fine. Yeah. I don't think the rule is that you have to get rid of the stand. Right. If you can still use it, I use it a lot because I need my hands free a lot of the time. Yeah, and and you have that like that energy too. So I could see. Yeah, I, I, I could see you when with when I those. Yell. Yeah, but yeah, I could see you with those like. Uh, headphone yeah. lines <laughs> yeah i have had a lav before on my shirt um i have done that before and that's great for me i think you know when i eventually shoot my hour i'll probably have a hands-free mic situation going on are you working on your hour right now yeah 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 I'm so working on what, the what's the pre- preparation for that in in your view like um just like getting up and um just getting up as much as possible, going on the road, running it, adding new things to it. I would say I've got like 40 minutes right now. That you're happy with. Minutes, that I'm happy with. Yeah. I do an hour on the road, but I'm usually filling it with like 20 minutes of crowd work. Right. Um, so I've got like a premise in my head of what I want it to be. So then that helps me kind of figure out what, kind of material i want to do and so it feels like a complete a complete idea yeah Yeah. because i i think a little secret to uh do because i've only shot one special and it took me honestly like four or five years to really and that's probably a lot but like i didn't want to shoot it until i knew i was comfortable it would be funny and also right there's no rush you know what i mean and also, I wanted to find the perfect club to do yeah, it. Where did you shoot it? I actually shot it at the rec room. Oh, you did? Yeah, which is I feel is the best club in, in the world because it's so intimate and you just can't bomb there. You know what I mean? And even if you want to bomb there, you don't bomb there. Is that so? Anytime I've played there, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. I was really looking forward to seeing you in November, man. Damn, I gotta get out there. I gotta book a date now. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Do I book through you? No, book through Kenny. But, <laughs> I book through Kenny. Yeah. yeah, but no, yeah, but yeah, dude. I, I I'll definitely go there and support you, man. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, no, I'll talk to Kenny. I'll get another one on the on the books. Yeah, anytime I've gone up there, it's been killer. It's been great. Yeah. Because I like those small, small clubs. Because see, that's another thing where you know, it is a good size, and I like the stage is like not too high. You yeah, really like sit there with them. It's like a living room. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because you know I, I've done theaters before, and I hate theaters. I really do. Like the the laughter, it's like a roar where like it starts and then there's a loud echo. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just like the clubs because it's the laugh right there, and like you could still hear it and you don't have to rush to the next show. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You know, the benefit of the theater is no check spot, you know? Yeah. That, that's true too. 
but, but yeah. I guess, uh, you know, if you shoot your special there, maybe they, they won't be serving uh, nachos in the middle of your set. Or they probably do it during the feature. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That's true, too. That's actually that's pretty really, smart. <laughs> that's really smart. That's cool. I, yeah, that's what, like, Ray Romano did his special at, like, the uh, um, with the Comedy Cellar. And I think it's cool to do it at a club. Chappelle doing it at the Comedy Store and Gerard doing it at the Comedy Store. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I like that a lot. Now, John, I, I have two more questions for you because I want to respect your time. But not saying the Madonna in, uh, tell us your your worst hotel experience that you that you got into. Like, were you scared for your life? Oh, you know, it's funny. This just came to my head. It's not the worst hotel experience because off the top of my head, I, I don't have it right now. But just because it's so recent, I was just in Tempe doing the improv there and we got in trouble. Security came up and I, the openers, I bring an opener and MC with me, my buddies. And like I said, you know, I'm not Bill Burr or whatever. So like, you know, I'm sharing a hotel room with right. these guys. You're being the Norm Macdonald to them. I mean, the Norm Macdonald, but Norm Macdonald's got a suite. You know, we've got a double, like, we're like, you know, bed to bed. And we're fucking around. And we get a, we get a, a call. Or no, we don't even get a call. The security comes right up. That's the thing is, there was no warning. The security, like, comes up and he's like, you guys are fucking screaming in here. We're going to throw you out of here. If I hear it again, I'm going to throw you the fuck out of the hotel. And it's like, it's weird to get in trouble as like a 32 year old, you know, like being told to go to bed as a grown up is a wild thing. I was like, we're in trouble. But this guy was so aggressive. And I was really like upset that he would be so aggressive out the gate. There was no warning, no call up to the room. Like, hey, could you guys keep it down? And now since then, I've it's like one of those things where I'm like replaying all the things I wish I had said to the guy, you know, we're a guest at the hotel too. That You don't need to speak to us this way. You know, we're we're performing at the, the local comedy club here, pumping money into the economy during a, during tough times. I was and, on SNL. Know, I, was, I was on SNL one season, three sketches. Where, where, what did you do? You know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, home again, uh, whatever, you know, and I'm fucking going through my IMDb. But I didn't say anything. To, instead, I just didn't say anything to him. And my buddy Noah said, uh, sorry, we were just playing. I was like, I can't believe it. And this guy was so confused. Like every, all the wires in his brain were crossed. Like his, like his mind exploded. He was like, yeah. well, 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 you're adult. So fucking go to bed. What? You, you were playing? You know, and we were, we were playing. We were like doing, we were doing like a dueling game. Yeah. We were like going back to back with fake guns and going one, two, three, turn. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> We're in our we're in our thirties and we were dueling, um, so pretty embarrassing. But yeah, that's pretty much what happens after after we perform. It, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you 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 call your friend on the on the telephone because you don't have a cell phone, and you're like ring ring ring, and it's like hello, hey Raymond, you want to come over and play? Yeah, yeah, truly. I mean, that's we're like children. We're yeah. Like children. We're like jumping on the bed and we're just like getting stoned and being idiots. And we, we got in trouble. So yeah. that's my most recent hotel experience, but I, I've had plenty of stayed in plenty of weird places on the road. And it's yeah. always, you know, as it can be terrible, but the, the terrible ones are the ones you remember, honestly. So I'm never, they also haunt you the most. They can haunt you. Yeah. They can haunt you. Like, uh, uh, have you ever, like, uh, like this happened to me. I, I was in Temecula. Uh, they had this club called Aces Comedy Club. It's like three or four years ago. And uh, maybe it was five. It doesn't really matter. But so they put me in this, like, cheap-ass motel where literally the locks were broken and all that stuff. And my the room next to me, like had to be a hooker or something because like there's all these guys coming in, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm sleeping like at 3 a.m. and there's a knock on my door and I had to put the chair on the door because I was like, this place was ghetto. And uh, he's like, open the door, let me in. Like he was the big bad wolf. And I was like, 
acting like nobody's there, you know, because I don't want to open the door. And then he's like, if you don't open the door, I'm going to come in and shoot you. No. I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm definitely not opening the door now. <laughs> so I slept in the bathroom. Like I was scared shitless. Dude. Did you yeah. actually fall asleep that night? No, no, not at all. But I shut the bathroom door. The lights were out. And I was just like, you know, I, I can handle myself. But like, dude, you know, if there's drug well, dealers. And see, coming stuff, out of there in the morning must have been scary, too. You're like, this guy might be waiting for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that scary. But in the morning, I waited till like noon. But uh, You didn't call the police or anything, huh? No, not during when he was there because I was scared shitless like he could hear me. Oh, yeah, That's a crazy story, Keith. Crazy story. The worst yeah, part is the girl that. was not a hot hooker. No, that is the worst part. Like, <laughs> like, like you know, I could kind of understand if she was like super hot, but this is like Big Mama's house. Well, <laughs> I, I have to say I'm absolutely shocked that at the quality in in Temecula uh, <laughs> that the hooker was not attractive. That's that's really a shocker to me. <laughs> Who would have thought? I know, right? <laughs> you're, you're playing you're playing a C room. It's not going to be an A level escort service well, here. I, I can't do and see that's another thing where like I think like. For you, you know, even though, like, you're kind of, like, you kind of want SNL to, like, escape your mind, it's also a blessing to you because you got the A and A and the B plus rooms. I just got the C rooms, you know what I mean? Oh, you know, I do I do B and C rooms uh, for sure, for sure. Um, and it varies, you know, the longer I'm off SNL, the, the shittier the gigs can get sometimes, actually, because even though I'm, I just did a TV show and I do movies here and they, they're not, they're not, they don't translate to stand up dates. Right. So, um, yeah. So, so weirdly, I, I will still do, I will still do very shitty gigs. I mean, um, the bowling alley in Muskegon was after, uh, was after SNL. Mm -hmm. Did you get, that, it, did you get a free game of bowling out of it? Uh, no, I got saved. <laughs> I got chased out of the venue by a, by a, a woman who was there. Wow. I ran out of the room. It was pretty <laughs> wild. It was pretty crazy. I'll never forget it. And then my last know. question for you is, you're, you're a big romantic comedy buff like me. What's your favorite romantic comedy that you're not in? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great ones. I feel like Jerry Maguire's got to be up there, right? Yeah. Like that's that's kind of perfect movie. Uh, when Harry Met Sally's pretty perfect movie. Palm Springs, honestly, so good. That yeah. came out a few years ago. I thought that was that was incredible. Um, yeah, those are the ones that are popping into my head right now. When you when you watch Harry Met when you watch Harry Met Sally, do you do you think to yourself? Because like I, I I agree, I think that's a perfect movie. But while I'm watching it, I I I think to myself, Billy Crystal used to do stand up. Yeah, he did, right? I haven't watched a ton of his stand up yeah. at all. I wonder what it what it was like. I'm sure it was very good, right? It was all right. I mean, you know, but I, I saw his one man show on Broadway and it was great. Yeah. Seven hundred Sundays. And the, yeah. But like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Was like, I was always inspired by him. Oh, Billy Crystal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always loved him. Yeah. But I never, like, grew up watching his stand-up. I just, like, grew up watching his movies. and City Slickers. City Slickers. and Yeah. And then Forget Paris. That one was... Forget Paris. I love Forget Paris. That was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. That was, like, my mom's favorite movie. And she had me watch that with the pigeons and, and all that with Deborah Winger. Yeah, that's... Uh... It's it's amazing because like you don't see movies about an NBA ref. You know what right. I mean? I know. <laughs> I know that was brilliant that that was his job and he's such a short little Jewish guy. 
And I remember the grandpa too in the car, like calling Toyota, you got it. When he's just like in the car, looking at all the signs and repeating oh. everything as he's passing by. Yeah, that's a classic movie. I bet it holds up too. Um, so, Mr. Saturday Night. Oh, that was a great one. Yeah. American Sweethearts. American Sweethearts. Well, yeah. Eddie John Cusack, too. I mean, yeah. Uh, John uh, John Cusack. High Fidel- that's my High boy. Fidelity, High Fidelity is up there for me, actually. is top uh, romantic comedy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's an incredible movie. I'm like the John Cusack of stand up. I just say anything. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, John, where can the That's folks at home follow special. you, man? Oh, yeah. Uh, just my name, John Renitsky, J-O-N-R-U-D-N-I-T-S-K-Y. I'm on Instagram uh, and, nothing, and nothing else. Uh, it's so funny. Like, I know uh, before we go, because I thought when I first talked to you on the Instagram, I, I didn't know it was really you because, like, there's all these, you know, spam for celebrities and stuff. So the fact that you said yes was really cool. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for thinking that I've got that many fan accounts or uh, that somebody would want to pretend to be me. I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Well, John. Uh, but it was a pleasure, Keith. I'll see you out in Huntington Beach at the Yeah, record. man. Let's do it. Uh, and thank you so much for, for doing Razor Let's Rich. Do it. And, uh, yeah, you could do it. You could do a spot on the show when I'm when I'm when I'm headlining there. That'd be fun. Oh, that'd be cool, man. All right. All right, All All right, right John. Have we'll a sleep great day, in one buddy. hotel room, even though even though I, I can just drive back to LA. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there won't good. be any like ugly hookers in that hotel. We'll, we'll stay in Temecula. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to stay in Temecula. Um, we'll, we'll play. Yeah. Exactly, we'll play. Thank you for having me, Keith. I appreciate it, man. All right, Take John. Care. Have a great day, buddy. You as well. Uh, All right. Bye. That was my interview with John Rodnitsky, guys. Subscribe, rate, review, and tell a friend. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.